Hey everybody, um, we're going to talk about proportions and word problems today. The thing about proportions and word problems that's probably kind of essential that you have to know is the fact that it's pretty easy to do them. You just have to be aware. When you have a word problem, how, well, how do you even know that you have to deal with the idea of a proportion? You're going to look for three things. The first thing you're going to look for is whether or not the let me lower down that size of that font. Sheesh. So it's because I made the other one so big, I suppose. So we're going to knock this down to, say, 22. Okay. The first thing you're going to look for is two items or two concepts or two beings. Maybe you have something in their shadows or maybe I have um, a map and its scale. See, a map is not drawn, obviously, in full size. That would be ridiculous ridiculous, why would you draw and draw a full-size map? A map would be pointless because you could just walk it out yourself. A map the size of Tennessee that covers Tennessee makes no sense whatsoever. So you have to put that map in scale. So you're looking for two items, and it could be, um, you know, like I said, it could be just a map and versus its scale. It can be a person uh, versus their shadow. You have two items that you're dealing with. Also, you're going to look for three numbers. Whoops. Usually those numbers are given out in numerical form, which means they actually look like numbers. So if you see a word problem that's got three numbers in it, you're halfway there. But you have to be careful because it's possible that they won't put them in uh, numerical form. They'll put them in word form. So four could be the number four, or like this, or it could be written out as F-O-U-R. So you have to be careful that you're aware of how they write them out. But if you see three things that indicate there are numbers involved, you're almost meeting all the criteria necessary to determine that you're actually going to do a proportions question. The last one is that you are trying to find the fourth, not 43rd, the fourth number. So the series has three numbers given, and there's a fourth number related to one of the two items. This is the 2, 3, 4 criteria for being able to determine that's a proportions question. So if I have two things, there's three numbers given, I'm trying to find the fourth thing, 2, 3, fourth. That's all the criteria that you need. So um, let's take a look at the idea of how to solve some of these problems. How about it? Uh, let's look at this one. A map has a scale of 1 inch. Uh, for 13 miles. With this map, uh, if Cumba and Rockville are 91 miles apart, then they are how far apart on the map? So I'm looking for my, first off, I'm going to look for my two things, and I've got, uh, in this problem, I've got a map, and I've got a scale, so I'm part of the way there. I have one, two, three numbers in this problem. This is a perfect proportions question. So what I'm going to do is set up a proportion. To be smart about it, I'm going to set up a proportion related to one of the two items. This is the scale. One inch is equal to 13 miles. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a proportion, or a ratio, should I say. One inch over 13 miles. That means on the map that for every one inch, I could, in real life, I would have to travel 13 uh, mi miles to get there. I don't know where I wrote inches again. I think I just saw inches above and did that. So don't be dumb like I was. Then set it equal. Then I have this 91 miles to deal with. Now, remember we talked about before that creating a proportion or creating ratios for the proportion is kind of like running an insane asylum, which is to say you have to make sure that your dangerous people are upstairs and your sane people are downstairs. Fortunately, in this type of problem, the units are labeling whether someone is dangerous or not. It's like putting a colored sticker on their shoulder. So I'm like, oh, you're on the wrong floor, uh, Jerry, because you're supposed to be upstairs because you have a red sticker. Well, this miles here, right here, is like a sticker on the shoulder. So all I have to do is make sure all the stickers are together. 13 miles on the bottom, so 91 miles goes on the bottom over x. From here, all I have to do is, number one, figure out where I lay down my calculator, because there's no way in the world that, uh, I guess I could sit here and try to do this longhand, but I don't want to do all of them that way. So, un momento, por favor.
you figure I'd edit that kind of thing out, right? Wrong. So I'm going to do cross products. So I do 91 times 1, which is obviously 91. So 91 equals 13 times x. Now, when I have 13 times x, I need to get the x by itself. So I'm going to draw my line down the middle. And I'm going to divide because this shows multiply. So divide by 13 on both sides. 91 divided by 13 is 7. x equals 7. So to answer their question, uh, how far apart are they on the map? They are 7, and the unit here would be inches, so 7 inches apart. Okay, let's look at another one. Another question about scales, apparently. They really like scales. Um, Kumba and Greenwood are 10 inches apart on a map that has a scale of 1 inch and 12 miles. How far apart are the real cities? So in this case, I know how far apart they are on the map, but I don't know how far apart they are in real life. So the first thing I'm going to look for is see if I have two things. And in this case, once again, I've got a map and I've got its scale so that everything's working perfect for me. I have one, two, one, two, three three numbers. So this is proportions all day long. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a ratio for my scale. So one inch over 12 miles. Uh, from there, I'm going to determine whether the 10 inches goes on top. The 10 inches has a sticker for the asylum of inches. So I'm going to put it with the other inches, which is one. 10 inches. Now it's set up. The key to getting these problems right is setting them up. Once you set them up, it's just cross products. And you've been doing cross products for days, so you should be fine with it. So I'm going to do 12 times 10, because they're across from each other, equals 1 times x. Bring this down. 12 times 10 is 120. And I'm done, other than finding the unit. Here the x is uh, 1, and that's just the same as x, so I don't need to divide by 1. That would be meaningless. So 120, and we're in real life, so I'm looking for miles. So my final answer is 120 miles. So now I know how far I have to drive if I'm looking on the map, if I'm actually going to go from one place to the other, say. Let's look at another one. Mm, we did a map scale. I'm tired of that one. We kind of done models. Let's look at this one. This one sort of has a scale, it sort of doesn't, so it sort of is what it is, I suppose. Um, another possible thing to deal with, and let me create a sample problem for you. That might work actually better. Let me flip down here to make a page. Okay. Let's talk about this idea. What happens if I know that the exchange rates, because let's talk about exchange rates. Something you may or may not know about me is that my wife is Canadian, which makes my son half American and half Canadian, which means that I have to travel across the Canadian border a lot. I go every year, sometimes twice a year, um, to various parts because her family lives you know, all over the place. So we go to Canada a lot. It's important for me to know how many American dollars it takes to make um, Canadian dollars. When we first got married, American dollars were worth a you know pretty significant amount more. It was something like um, 75 American cents was one Canadian dollar. So I could get more Canadian dollars for my American dollar. Now that the economy has changed and the Canadian economy has been a little bit more stable, the Canadian dollar is actually worth more than the American dollar. It's not worth considerably more, but it is worth a little more. So let's live in a theoretical world where I can get 1.25, so one and a quarter, uh, American dollars for every Canadian dollar. So we're going to create a fake exchange rate. We're going to say the American economy and the dollar bill has totally tanked. So it's 1.25 American dollars. for every one Canadian dollar. By the way, a Canadian dollar is not in a bill. It's a coin, and it has a duck on it. So uh, it has a loon on it, and it's uh, called the loonie. 
and if you have a two dollar coin which are very which are much more popular in Canada um, you have a toonie so Canadian dollars are called loonies Canadian two dollars are called toonies and they both come in coins and I think pretty soon their five dollars are going to go to coins as well and they only have bills for 10 20 and so on so anyway let's say I have what's a normal amount three hundred dollars across the border with and that's an American and I need to know how much Canadian money I'm going to get back without considering the fact that they're going to charge me a fee. So let's say I have some happy soul that would just love to have American money because they like to keep it, and they're not going to charge me any money to, to transfer one money to the, uh, one type to the other. So I have 300 uh, American dollars, and one and per I have 300 American dollars. I need to figure out how many Canadian dollars I need. So do I have meet my two, three, four criteria? That's what I'm always thinking about. Do I meet it? Do I meet it? In this case, I do. I have American dollars and I have Canadian dollars. That's two things. Do I have three numbers? Well, if you can't see the screen, that's the only way you wouldn't know that there are not three numbers. There's 1.25, 1, and 300. Now, uh, and I put this dollar bill here. I guess I should put American. To uh, Sorry about that. I flipped it out. This program tends to zoom in. That's what it's actually designed to do. It just happens to. So let me rewrite this. Uh, let's do 1.25A for American. Let's do uh, 1.0C for Canadian. And I have 300 American dollars. Now the first thing I'm going to do is set up a ratio for this part. Why wouldn't I? So I'm going to set up 1.25 American and I'm going to make a label for myself. It's kind of like I said, the stickers on their shoulders in your asylum scenario. That'd be Canadian. Equals, now I have to figure out where to put this. Well they have the A as the sticker, I guess that's the scarlet letter. Um, so 300 American dollars over x. From here it's simple. You guys can do this in your sleep at this point. Cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to do 300 because 300 times 1 is 300 equals 1.25x. Draw my line through that equal sign. To This is a multiply because they're touching. So I'm going to divide. get rid of that multiply. That would cancel this out because 1.25 divided by 1.25 is just 1. So that x drops out. And then I do 300 divided by 1.25 and I get 200 oops, and 40 dollars. But I have to label it. And remember this $300 is American so it's 200 and 40 Canadian dollars. That's all you've got to do. It's pretty simple to um, make the connection between the two things and that's all really you have to do. Remember to look for two things. If it's a scale and a map, that's two things. If it's uh, one money type versus another, that's two things. Um, and there may be a couple questions in here like yesterday's, the shadow questions. I like to mix it up a little bit so you don't forget how to do those. If you've got a shadow and it's written out, you've got a shadow and you've got a, a, a person or a statue or a tree or something, that's two things. And the two things are really groups of things. It's like uh, con it's um, people or statues in one group and then shadows in the other. So you have two there. You look for three numbers. Usually those numbers are going to be written out as numerals. So 4, 1, 12 actually looks like what they're supposed to look like. So in this power plant question, for instance, the 12 is written out, so is the 1, and so is the 4. Then all you need to do is look, if you're looking for the fourth number in sequence, so I'm looking how tall is the model, so that's the fourth piece of information, I can set up a uh, ratio. Set up a ratio that's already given, if one is given, and then uh, equals the ratio that you create. Make sure that dangerous and safe and sane people are on the same floor of your theoretical insane asylum and you're ready to roll. Just cross multiply and divide from there. That's all you have to do. Um, 
there's people here in the room that will help you do this. So don't flip out like it's impossible to ever figure this sort of stuff out. And, um, you know, good luck.